New graphics, new music, new garage, and 30 maps. The only thing that remains unchanged is the minimum system requirements. Watch the update 1.0 review for more details. You can already see the scope of changes in the garage. The old, small, cozy garage was replaced. It's completely different. While looking at it, you don't want to say the word garage anymore. This place inspires new achievements and victories. The good old-fashioned big world has served the game faithfully and loyally for more than eight years. Now it steps aside for a new graphics engine, Core. This is an in-house development of the Wargaming team. The engine will bring new lighting into the world of tanks, shadows, sky, new water effects and landscapes. All the vegetation and the majority of objects on the maps have been rendered anew. The newest technologies allow the team to add visual effects into the game that impress with their realism. Interactions between the vehicles and the environment have shifted to a completely different level. Just look at the shooting effects. The Havoc Destruction technology allowed us to change our approach to the in-game destruction system. In future, the number of destructible objects will be increasing. The new engine made each map almost borderless. But the most important thing is that the minimum system requirements haven't changed. If you could play World of Tanks on your rig with the older graphics, you will be satisfied with the new graphics on the same PC. When you first launch the game, the settings will be defined automatically. The system will select the maximum quality with a comfortable FPS for playing. If this isn't enough, you can adjust the settings manually. You can watch a special video on our channel about how to adjust the settings for your rig. The link is in the description. Moreover, we're releasing a special software config tuner soon. It will allow you to increase FPS by setting the visual effects more precisely. Follow our news on the official website. Update 1.0 will include 29 familiar maps recreated in HD. The first in-game map, Corellia, will be there as well. The remarkable mountain pass with its mountain scenery and the beloved by many Nebelberg. The Arctic region map got new visuals and a new name. Now it's called Monerheim Line. The Overlord map has been reworked greatly. There are some changes for almost every map. The vegetation has changed in some of the maps. Stones have appeared in some places. Some maps now have an altered landscape. From the gameplay perspective, most changes have been introduced to such maps as Ruinburg, Steps, Fjords, Fisherman's Bay, and Erlenburg. Previously, the upper team could easily shoot through the central street from the green area on Ruinburg, while the opponents couldn't do anything about it. Now, the bottom team has a position that compensates this unfair gameplay. Both flanks have been significantly improved on steps. Now, the map has more cover and spots for positional warfare. This will allow for a more pragmatic approach for both attackers and defenders. Fjords has become much more picturesque, but that's not the most important aspect. The hill at the center of the map and its approaches have changed greatly. There are now fewer trees in the city. The streets have become wider and brighter. The majority of changes in the Fisherman's Bay are related to the first and second lines. We have reworked the landscape here significantly. Now it's easier to play on vehicles with bad depression angles. Apart from this, the central zone has also changed. It will be easier to spot an enemy from here. It has much more open space now. Erlenberg has changed a lot. The buildings in the central part of the map are more dense. It's harder to shoot through this area from afar now. The hills on the flanks have become mild. At the same time, there is more vegetation now. One of the primary changes is the river. Now you can cross it almost anywhere. 
The developers understand that good balance is important for any map. They constantly analyze statistics, read the comments on the forum, and don't stop introducing new features. The developers won't cease updating the maps after Update 1.0 is released. Another in-game winter map will be the brand new Glacier. To say the least, it's a very exciting map. You have to see it. The map brings players closer to the Arctic Circle. Battles will evolve around snowy, impassable mountains, in the middle of a real graveyard of huge, impressive ships. The greater part of the map is a frozen surface. In some places, the ice can even crack under heavy vehicles and they will sink. So first, you should be careful and study the map thoroughly. The release of Update 1.0 is a perfect occasion to turn the music up. Each in-game map now has its own unique soundtrack. These aren't just 30 tracks, it's something greater and complete. Each melody more than immerses players in the atmosphere of the map that it has been composed for. A melody develops depending on the team's progress in a battle. We could talk about it all day but it's better to just listen to it. Update 1.0 is the start of a new countdown. Much has been done already, but so many new and interesting things are still to come. Follow the updates and good luck on the battlefields.